I will make thee a new sharp threshing instrument having teeth. Thou shalt thresh the mountains and be them small, and shall make the hills as shaft. I will make thee a new sharp threshing instrument. We want to invite the presence of the Holy Spirit that the Lord will make of us a new sharp threshing instrument that we can pull down mountains. We can, we can raise valleys. We will do the biddings of the Lord. The Lord will carve us, prune us, nature us. We have come to the potter's house. We've come for something. There is a desire burning in our souls. We invite the presence of the living God to help us today to walk through his will, to build us up, to make us formidable, empower us, renew us. Speak to the Lord. Father, new sharp threshing instrument. Having teeth, we can be toothless. Having teeth, grant to us purpose. Let there be a burning desire. Speak to us, turn us around, make us men who can turn the environment around for Jesus. Build us, grant to us grace. Do your work in us mightily today. Let your spirit be in this atmosphere that we shall be blessed and be vessels carrying your will to the nations and to the communities. In Jesus' name we've prayed. In Acts chapter 3 verse 6, then Peter said, silver and gold have I, have I none, but such as I have, give I thee. What you have is what you give. We want to open up the portals of our, our capacity, the portals of our spirits unto the Lord. Lord, if I have nothing, I can offer nothing. So build me up, grant me capacity. Peter said, what I have is what I give. Fill me and feed me today. Fill me and fill me today. Fill me, fill me. In 20 seconds, speak that language to the Lord. We need this infilling mind and grace. The economy must transform. Our schools must transform. Our businesses must change. Our system must change. But it will take an infilling, 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 infilling. Fill us, Lord. Fill us, Lord. Condition us for your will. Condition us for your will. Fill us. So that we can feed all those who are thirsty and hungry. In Jesus' name we've prayed. In Ephesians chapter 6 verse 18 and 19. Paul said, pray for me too that I can have utterance to reveal the mysteries of God. Let's pray for our father in the Lord, Pastor Dr. W. F. Kumwe, that this morning too, God will grant him utterance. The spirit of life will come upon his tongue. That every word that will come out of him who speak life into every dead bone, every dead cell, who speak life into ministries, into businesses, into us in the name of Jesus. Pray for him that the grace of the Lord, the potency of his word, the mysteries in the word of the Lord will be unveiled through his tongue. God should grant him utterance in the name of Jesus. Tell the Lord. God should grant him utterance that as he speaks, lives are transformed. This morning, we will not go by the same. And that this atmosphere, anything at all is possible. Speak to the Lord. Oh, yes, Lord. We wait in our lives. In Jesus' mighty name, we've prayed. Amen. Our glorious Father, we thank you for a day and time like this. It's wonderful to sit with you and dine with you. Our souls were famished, but we are grateful unto you that at such a time, you have decided to feed us so that we could be vehicles of grace, turning, turning our communities, turning our businesses, turning our staffs, turning wherever we operate to the Lord. We pray that this morning too will be another time where every soul will be fed, that our capacity will be enlarged enough to help us move on, walk with you, and do the biddings of God. We pray that you take absolute dominion over everything. From the beginning till the end, may we say it was good we came. We bless your name so much because today will be impacting. Thank you, Jesus, for being with us. In Jesus' glorious mighty name we've prayed. And let the house say, Amen. God bless you. Please be seated. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. At this moment, we want to enter into the throne room and come before God in worship and in praise. And therefore, I would entreat everyone to involve and pour out your worship before God. We'll kindly be on our feet, please. Just open your mouth and give God worship. He deserves it. He is the great I am. He is the most holy one. He is holy. He is great. Oh, Lord, my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the world's thine hands hath made. grace of our loving Lord and grace that exceeds our sins and our guilt yonder Uh 
the whole world know oh, how I love Jesus, oh, how I love Jesus, because he first Last time, pour your love on him if ever, if ever I love you, Jesus, is now. Hallelujah.
Praise the Lord. To introduce the dignitaries is uh, Bishop De La Fiagome. Is the president of the Full Gospel Church International. Can we continue to clap more for Jesus? Oh, give it to Jesus. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and today, Monday, the Lord has been good. And we want to especially welcome all of you for the consistency and the great works that we're experiencing in Ghana. The land is blessed. I said the land is blessed. I said the land is blessed. Ghana is blessed. We want to acknowledge the presence of these dignitaries. And uh, as and when the list uh, gather, will still draw your attention to these great men and women of God. Not in any special or particular order. We have Reverend, very Reverend Helena Opoku Sarkodie of the Tema Joint Church. You are welcome. Then we have Prophet George Amenin, the founder of Porter's Gate Ministry. You are especially welcome. You know, Miss, we have Apostle Listowell, who has preached the word ministries. Especially welcome. And then we have Reverend Paul Boafo, the moderator uh, Methodist Church. We thank you for coming. And as we receive more on the list, we will bring them to your attention. Thank you very much. Thank you. At this time, at this time, you will rise up and take our program booklet as we go into congregational song. It is so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word, just to rest upon his promise, just to know that says the law. Oh, how sweet to trust in Jesus, just to trust his cleansing blood, just in simple faith to plunge me, indeed the healing cleansing flood, yes. It is sweet to trust in Jesus, just from sin and self to cease, just from Jesus simply taking life and rest and joy and peace. I'm so glad I learned to trust thee, precious Jesus, Savior, friend, and I know that thou art with me, will be with me to the end. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him. I have proved him over and over. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus. Oh, for grace to trust him more. Just to take him at his word, just to rest upon his promise, just to know the said the Lord. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I proved him. 
Jesus. Just from sin and self to cease, just from Jesus simply taken, life and rest and joy and peace. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust Him, how I root Him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust Him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. So today we want to do something Pentecostal. And the song we're trying to minister to you this morning is CSCME. Asking the Lord to prepare us that he will make us a well. The souls who are out there and hungry and thirsty for the Lord, they will be able to come in and fetch from you because we are a replica of Jesus. So when people are looking for Jesus and they meet us, they should be able to see Jesus through us. So the song this morning we are ministering is that we want the Lord to make us a well that people who are hungry for him can come and fetch from. Amen.
beauty of Jesus want to end it with us this morning. Oh,
Lord. Praise Jesus. Distinguished ministers of the gospel and professionals, it's time to receive the unadulterated word of God from the throne of grace. To introduce the personality that is going to bring the word of God from the throne of grace is the very Reverend Helena Opoku Sarkodie. She is an ordained minister of the Methodist Church of Ghana. He is also the resident minister, Tema Joint Church. Hallelujah. Praise and God. good morning to all of you distinguished men and women of God. This is an honor. I mean, to say it's an honor is even an understatement. To introduce a man who has a kingdom agenda, a man with a global vision, a man who has raised a movement that is shaking the world, a man who you only read about in books. I read about him when I was way back in secondary school, and you can imagine how long ago that was. And to stand here today to introduce him, I don't know if there's anything called privilege and honor. The man is so calm, his simplicity, his demeanor. I, since I started joining the crusade, uh, the first day started, he always sits there and his face is always shining like that. So I searched, and I wanted to find out a little bit about his name. And Google told me Kumoi means ambitious, charismatic, focused, passionate, sincere, courageous. And I said, it is true. And if you bring all these qualities into Christ, then there's an explosion. And that is who he is. Beloved in Christ, I am in love with the deeper life. And I honor the man of God. And to even stand on the same platform with him, you have no idea how that feels like. Shall we please, with a standing ovation and a kingdom applause, welcome the man, the God. It's using to raise an end time army to change the world. Thank you, Papa. Thank you, Papa. Thank you very Thank you, much. I don't know whether John Wesley in heaven will be looking at us here and see how strong the Methodist Church has now come being in Ghana and showing the light, the light of holiness in this country and in the countries, almost all the countries of the world. And it's an honor being myself 
a student of John Wesley and the founder of the Methodist Church to be introduced today in a special way by a respected minister from the Methodist Church. God bless the Methodist Church here. And God bless all the churches we represent in Jesus' name. That one is for your local church. Amen. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you today. We bless your name for where we are in the church in Ghana, in the church all over Africa, and in the church everywhere in the world. Lord, we pray that your word that on this rock you build your church and the gates of hell cannot prevail, will not prevail, must not prevail on the church of the living God. Lord, strengthen our leaders, our bishops, our pastors, and all the ministers and the professionals of this country. Lord, we pray that the church will come stronger. We pray that our professionals will become more resourceful in Jesus' name. Bless us here and use us to bless this country. And then all the leaders of the church and workers all over the world that are gathering together, connected with us, we pray that your goodness will overshadow everyone. We will go higher. We will do more. We will achieve more. Even in this our day, your power will be mighty in the whole church universal. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. God bless you. You can sit down. You understand that we are talking about the grace of God. And the power of God in this end time so that with that grace and power we can evangelize our world. My topic today is profitable pursuit and perseverance in the end time harvest. Pursuit and perseverance in the harvest in these end times, profitable pursuit and perseverance in the end time harvest. We're looking at Matthew chapter 24, and I read from verse 3. It says, And as I sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us. When shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of the of thy coming and of the end of the world? Do you notice there are three things? When shall these things be? What shall be the sign of your coming? And what shall be the sign of the end of the world? If the world will not end, Christ will have corrected them. They were disciples, corrected them. They were disciples, they were learners. And they came to learn from their master and the teacher and the Messiah and the Savior that has come into the world. He would have said, now, disciple means learner. And since you came to learn, and you said the world is going to come to an end, no, 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 it's not going to come to an end. He would have corrected them, but because he didn't correct them, that means the world will eventually come to an end. And if the world will come to an end, there is the end time. And then we come to verse 4. It says, in verse, they said in verse 4, Jesus answered and said unto them, Take ye that no man deceive you. It means that at the end of the time, there will be men and women, 
there will be ministers and preachers that will deceive us that will try to deceive the disciples and the church and so he said take heed that no man whatever his status no man whatever his authority no man whatever cloud he collects around himself take heed that no man deceive you verse 5 in verse 5 it says for many shall come in my name end time many shall come in my name saying i am christ and shall deceive many in verse 6 it tells us it says and ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars it said you don't even have to glue your ear to the radio glue your sight to the television the information and the news will be everywhere it says you will hear and how many of us are not hearing we're hearing and then it says there'll be rumors of wars and wars as well see that ye be not troubled for all these things must come to pass but the end is not yet that means when you hear of those wars and rumors of wars you're not packing your ministerial bag your professional bag and saying uh, the end as we says no that end has not come look at verse 7 in verse 7 it says and for nation shall rise against nation this country might rise against that country and this nation against another nation and kingdom against kingdom and there shall be famines don't we see that pestilences peculiar plagues and sicknesses and disease and earthquakes are we hearing about that today in diverse different places and then it says in verse 8 in verse 8 all these the pestilences and the plagues and the diseases and the storms and the waves and the kingdoms of this world fighting against each other it said all these are the beginning of sorrows what does that mean it says this is even the beginning and the lowest ebb is going to escalate as the end draws near all those confusions and rumors of wars it said it's going to increase and escalate because all that we hear now all that we see now that just the beginning of sorrows verse 9 in verse 9 it says then shall they deliver you and to be afflicted and they shall kill you and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake it's saying there's going to be persecution but the persecution will not destroy the church in the world anywhere all those things that are the beginning of sorrows on you as a person on the church as a local church on the church as the global church the hotter the fire the stronger the church will be and the stronger you will be the lord is telling us when you hear everything happening and you see everything happening don't drop your head and say i am finished no you are not finished but your problems are finished and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego went into the fire, and the fire only burnt the rope of Nebuchadnezzar that tied them, but they stood up in the fire, and they walked in the fire, and the Son of God was with them in the fire. So shall it be for the church going through the fire of persecution. A local church the national church a national denomination as we look unto christ 
the first person in the fire, in the furnace, it will be with, you know, your name. I know, I know your name is Ghanaian name or maybe another nation's name. But today the Lord is giving you the name Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Now, what do we do in the last time? That is, in the period of the end time. What are we going to do? Look at verse uh, 14. In verse 14, it now tells us, and this gospel of the kingdom. In the time in which we live, in the end time, when all those commotions are there, and the wars and the rumors of wars, it said, even at that time, this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world, in all the world, nation against nation, rumors of wars and wars and all those things, even at such a time, it says this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached. Not another gospel, <laughs> you see sometimes, when, uh, you know, a teacher sees that the students are not paying attention. And the students want something uh, that is watered down. And they say, sir, this subject you are teaching, I had of, you know, simple equations before now. It's uh, another kind of uh, thing. I'm pairing simultaneous equation, quadratic, whatever. Uh, this one is too tough. Lower it. If you lower it, your students will not pass the exam that they came to that school to prepare for to pass. The same thing with the preacher. The preacher, the, the, the pastor, and the teacher of the word coming from the apostle and the prophet and the evangelist and the pastor and the teacher, if we lower the standard, if we say things are tough now, People are poor now. People are confused now. People are dejected now. And then we come to, we turn to motivational speakers. And we're no more preaching the gospel of the kingdom. Our students, our members will fail the final exam. They will not get to heaven. Whatever the condition of the world, and whatever the trauma, and whatever the pressure, and whatever the situation, in this end time, this same gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come and we are the ministers and we are the people men and women and professionals that god has called at this time and we're going to have profitable pursuit and perseverance in the end time harvest we're looking at three subtitles number one describing the end time people to be harvested. We want to get into the harvest. We want to preach the gospel. We want to touch lives, turn lives around. We need to know the people we are harvesting. Number one is describing the end time people to be harvested. Number two, discovering the end time power, passion for the harvest. We need to discover we need to discern, we need to declare, we need to have, we need to possess the passion and time passion. If you, when you look at that passion, it means your excitement, your devotion, your concentration, the drive that you have within you. We cannot be sleeping on the pulpit. We cannot be tired on the pulpit. We cannot be weary on the pulpit. We cannot say this is a difficult congregation and this is a difficult time and the church is going through a lot now. We need to wipe their tears. We need to do this and we need to, you know, be carers of the people and no more preachers of the word. We must have age time passion for the harvest if the world is becoming more difficult we also become more tough 
at tough times in tough times only tough men and women only tough professionals only tough people that know where they're coming from and where they are and what they have come here to do you must be tough minded when the times are tough the ministers and the preachers and the professionals must be tougher than the tough time and we need to have passion discovering the end time passion for the harvest number three declaring the end time possession declaring the end time possession of holistic healing holistic healing holistic means everything gather together from the smallest to the greatest the internal the soul the spirit the mind and you have healing holistically completely every which whole in your personality in your behavior and in your tribe everything you have to know there is no speck there is no spot there is no stain of weakness in your personality that's where we are today that's what you are going to get before you go we're looking at number one number one is describing the end time people to be harvested john chapter 4 i'm reading from verse 34 in john chapter 4 verse 34 jesus says unto them my meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work and to finish his work notice that and then when he was at the cross he said it is finished you must be measuring the level and the height and the progress of what you have in the work he has committed to you he said this is my meat and this is my joy and this is my passion and this is all i'm aiming at and going at that i will finish the work he has given me to do and the testimony came it is finished look at verse 35 in verse 35 say not ye there are yet four months and then cometh the harvest do not say it's raining time and we cannot evangelize so do the harvest now do not say this is a tough time this is a difficult time and it is not time yet maybe by four months the time will come he said don't say that i say unto you lift up your eyes and look on the field for they are white already to harvest verse 36 it says and he that receiveth wages he that reapeth receiveth wages you will not lose your reward you will receive here on earth and then when you get to heaven i will not i don't know what i will recognize so because your glory will be so bright and shining you'll be rewarded in jesus name and then it says you gather fruit unto life eternal and both that both he that soweth and he that reapeth be rejoiced together verse 37 in verse 37 and hearing is the same true one soweth and another reapeth verse 38 it says i sent you to reap that whereon ye bestowed no labor other men labored and ye are entered into their labors what does that mean i send you to labor i said to give when in ye bestowed no labor other men have labored think of the bible we have in our hands 
other people have studied the original language hebrew and greek and the ancient languages and are able to uh, translate from the original language to the bible we have either the bible in english or the bible in our national language or the bible in other languages they labored and they labor sleepless nights that they did to be able to give us the bible look at the songs we sing other people have labored charles wesley and many other people that they labored so much and they gave us the song deep with meaning and we come now to bless the people of god with those songs but you know the songs are already composed they were already there most of them those old old songs old old hymns full of meaning and full of the bible better than all the you know new new songs the new songs they have their place when you want to dance you want to enjoy they have their place but when you want to have deep spiritual understanding other people labor and we come into their labor to do what they did look at this church building other people labored they labored for years they labored for months and now they have given us a look at the microphone and everything other people labored other people have labored well it's not just us now but the lord said you compliment and you make use you make profitable what other people have done and now i send you and you enter into their labor so that the real final profit of the world you bring to the congregation and you bring to our world so that those of us who are now preaching and the people who have labored before us us together we will have our rewards in jesus name you will not miss your reward you will not stop until you finish and come to the end of your assignment in jesus name look at look at three things here three things as we describe as we discover and time people to be harvested number one the dreadful pursuits of the fatal and uh, time uh, period the period in which we live in which we're ministering what's the period like number two is the deadening peculiarities of end uh, time uh, people who well, want to minister to them we're so eager we want them to have salvation we're so eager we want them to get out of the broad way and come to the narrow way the redemptive way that leads to heaven what do they look like how do they react how do they respond how do they take the message we have to them we come with love we come with passion and we come with the spirit of god we want to be to these people what are their peculiarities deadening peculiarities look at number three there number three deluding perception of faithless and time of pilgrims look at number one number one is the dreadful pursuits of fatal end time period we're looking at matthew chapter 24 matthew chapter 24 reading from verse 36 but of that day and hour knoweth no man no not the angels of heaven but my father only not even the angels of heaven did you hear the other day somebody rising up has joined his own observation scientific observation and is joined that with this uh, prophetic prodigy and now he says what jesus said only the father knows even the angels do not know he has climbed up to the height of spirituality above the angels and they are now telling us this the date he will come this the time he will come those are the liars deceivers jesus said of that day and of that hour knoweth no man no not the angels of heaven but my father only and then in verse 37 it says but 
as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. As the days of Noah were, the days of Noah was the age of an era. The flood will come, will sweep everybody away, and anyone that is going to be saved from that situation will have to enter into the ark. And Noah and a minority, his family, believed what others did not believe. The people who were always for the majority, they do not have any sense of their own, any mind of their own, any kind of examination, analysis of the times on their own in the majority. And you know, there are people that fear to be in the minority. And what other people shout, that's what they chorus, that's what they believe. But at the days of Noah, when only the minority believed a flood is coming, the end of this generation is coming. And only the people that believe that word and they entered into the ark, those who are the only people that will be preserved and secured. Where are you today? Are you with the majority or with the minority? Are you with Bible believers or you are with ideologies and the scientists? You know, things are getting on and things are improving and this will never end. Where do you stand? When you stand with God, are you stand with the revelation of the word? That only at the time when you act on what you know and believe, that's the time you'll be saved because it says at the days of Noah it says so shall also the coming of the son of man be look at verse 38 in verse 38 for as the days that were before the flood they were eating and drinking that was their consec concentration. I look at some churches today, you know, they say, come, I even hear of a particular uh, church, not in this country, of course, in another country, uh, that they will, they promise the young people, they give them wine, they, whatever they wanted, uh, to be able to spike, you know, their inner courage, whatever, they give to them eating and drinking. When we make the church, a church for socials, a church for dancing, a church for the young people to come and let go and release themselves, whatever they need, the music of the world, the attitude of the world, and the aspirations of the world, and the ambitions of the world, and the motivation of the world. Come, come, come. We have motivation here for you. Those motivational things don't get people thinking of themselves and thinking of their sin and thinking of salvation and the only way that leads to heaven. It says they were eating and drinking, they were marrying and giving in marriage. If you look at our society today, the young people, they only think about marriage, marriage, marriage. And then, you know, some church preachers and leaders say, if you want to succeed in any profession, you must look at the demand and then the demand will determine the supply what's the demand they want to hear about marriage and they don't want to hear about fornication uh -uh. that one does not sell they don't want to hear about quit adultery and quit your smoking and quit your hard drugs and quit occultism that one will not sell. And so, what will sell? Let go. Relax. Do whatever you want. Uh, some churches, they tell me there is no discipline in their church. There's no correction in their church. Whatever those young people do, that's what they enjoy. The demand determines the supply. 
that's it. Now mix, that's not Christianity. And then their daddies and their mommies, if you cannot correct the children, can you correct their daddies and their mommies and the financiers of those churches? No, they don't want that. That's the end time period. That's how people want. That's what they, that's what they live for. Then it said they were marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. And then Jesus said in verse 39, it says, and knew not, they knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of of the son of man be we're looking at number two here number two we're looking at the deadening peculiarities of end time people the attitude the action the lifestyle and the response of end time people they kill the spirit and they kill the soul the peculiarities of End time people were harvesting and were preaching the gospel to the dead in even your zeal, the deadening peculiarities of end time people. Look at First Timothy chapter 4, and I'm reading from verse 1. It says, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times Paul believed. There will be latter times. And the preachers, the apostles of the New Testament, they believed that they declared there will be latter times. And the Spirit now speaks expressly without covering the mouth in speaking and without using human wisdom and time wisdom to say the truth in a way the people will not even be able to interpret that's what he means that's what the preacher means and the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times it says some shall depart from the faith i'll not be among them you know to depart from the faith does not happen in a single jump, little by little, you preach of salvation, repentance, and faith in Christ. And the people look at you as if, what's he talking about? Repentance in this modern time? Coming away from evil in this modern time? And having faith in the only one, only one. How about the heroes? We don't have faith in them. How about the philosophers? How about the authors? How about the writers? How about the people that move and shake the world? We don't have faith in them. What's this? Where is this man coming from? That is talking of faith in Jesus and Jesus alone. Because there is no other person under the sun anywhere that can bring salvation to us except the name of jesus you know the people of these last days when you say this is the only way <laughs> you say this man is still primitive and he doesn't know that many roads lead to rome we're not going to rome we're going to heaven and only one way, only one way leads there. Now, the Spirit speaketh expressly that some, that in the latter time, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed, giving attention to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Look at verse 2. In verse 2, it says, speaking lies in uh, hypocrisy there are people who have gone to the school of communication and they know how to communicate they know the body language they know the vocabulary and they know the minds of the people they know how to turn them on if they want them to weep they can you know 
raise their emotion and they weep. And the very next minute, they want the preachers, the speakers, the motivators, they want them to laugh and to laugh their heads up. They know how to do that. They've gone to do the communication and, you know, education so that they can speak their lies in hypocrisy. And some people, you're sucked in. You're taking in because of the communication, not because of the content of what he's saying, but because of the communication that come to deceive. You will not be deceived. Speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Uh, when I became a believer, born again believer. I've always been religious all my life. My daddy was so religious. And mommy is so religious. And they brought us children to be religious. But religion is different from righteousness. The righteousness of God. I didn't have the righteousness that came with redemption through Christ. But only religious. When I became born again then. The Lord, when you will say born again, it's not just word of mouth. The Lord came into my heart. The Lord touched my conscience. And if I said anything mistakenly, even to a neighbor, even to a friend, even to a schoolmate, if I said anything that had some coloring, unfortunately, I'll go back there because my conscience will not leave me alone. I will go and talk to them and say, you know what? <laughs> the other thing, what I told you, was it yesterday I told you that? It wasn't the full truth. Let me tell you now. Because I had a conscience that is sensitive, responding to the truth. But you know people today, telling a lie, being hypocritical, denying the truth, pinching up, their lives as if they were angels when well, they're like demons they're like devils their conscience is so seared with a hot iron and those are the kinds of people we're talking to today and you preach the word they shake that off it touches their conscience say thou art the man madam thou art the woman and they have so trained their conscience they just shrug it off it means nothing those are the people who are ministering to today and we're trying to harvest it tells us in second timothy chapter 3 and i'm reading from verse 1 second timothy chapter 3 verse 1 this know also in first timothy he had told them what will be happening in the last days end time period then he comes to second timothy and he said timothy hey, don't close your book don't close your mind this know also that in the last days very lots times shall come in the last days, in the days in which we were living, and what the people were preaching the word to, it says, perilous times shall come. Then it says in verse 2, in verse 2, for men shall be lovers of their own selves. Men shall be lovers of their own selves. That means all they consider, like Achan, in going to war, all they consider is not to win the war for Israel, for the nation. It's to have some wedge of gold and Babylonish garment and all those things that attract the human unconverted eye. And then that's what they are pursuing. They'll be lovers of themselves. In the last days, they'll be lovers of themselves and there will be Absalom will not be looking for the joy of David. <laughs> What's that to me? I want to be happy. They're not, be, they're not believing for the establishment of the throne of David. What's that for me? Although God said that and God put him there, I want to be there. They'll be lovers of their own selves. My wife is not pretty enough and is not considering what how sorrowful the wife will be. If he takes any step that will kind of uh, make 
the woman sorrowful. She is not preaching enough. You know. And then they have the people in their congregation. That one is uh, more beautiful than my wife. That one is more pretty than my wife. They're only thinking of themselves, what they will have, not what the other person will suffer. In the last days, we'll have people that are selfish, self-centered, and egotistic, only what they want. They want, uh, you know, the beauty of that woman. They want the beauty of that flower. And they can pluck the, uh, the flower from, uh, from her root so that it will minister to what they want. And it says men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. But three tells us, it says, without natural affection. Even the affection that, uh, you know, natural people who are not born again uh, ought to have, uh, the affection that a, a, a mother ought to have for the child, the affection a father ought to have for the boys and for all the children, natural affection, that is gone. It's the last days. And when you look at the people that were ministering to the people, were preaching to the people, were bringing out of the darkness of the world and were bringing them to the light of the gospel. This is how they are. And as you're preaching to honor Christ, to exalt Christ, and to look at the suffering of Christ, they're not looking at the suffering of Christ, they're looking at the suffering they have at themselves. And it says, incontinent accusers, false accusers. And then it says, the truth breakers and their fears. You know, gone were the days when a young man could approach um, you know, a man and say, sir, I'm looking for this particular street. Can you show me? And a boy, the girl looks up. The fierceness that people carry out in their lives is like, stay where you are. I'm staying where I am. Their faces and their fierceness will drive you up. They say, you are coming. Uh -huh. Teacher is coming. It's going to correct me. Is going to point out this and this and that. And we people of any time period, we don't want any policeman of a preacher coming to talk to us. And as he's coming, we already have the fierceness on our faces. And the fellow will get the message. That's the world in which we're living. Those are the people we're trying to minister to. And they're despisers of those that are good. Nobody is good except themselves. In verse 4, in verse 4, it tells us, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures, more than lovers of God. Preacher. Do you want the, your church, your ministry to grow, to start with? Not your ministry. Not my ministry. It's the kingdom. The kingdom of God. Do I want you to grow for Christ, not for me? For Christ, not because of the finance I will get. For Christ, not because I want a big number of who am I. I am not the owner of the kingdom. But... You want your church, your ministry to grow. Yes, I do. Well, you know, you're too old-fashioned. And you, you're too Bible-based. You read everything with the dot of the I, with the cross of the T. Your church will not grow that way. If your church is going to grow, you must mellow it down, doctor it, and tailor it. Now, please pardon my illustration. I came to Ghana the first time, 1977, 78. And then we had a moderate crusade in Kumasi, Ghana. And then I waited behind so that 
I could do some follow up and discipleship. And a few people who were here at that time when I came, more than 40 years ago, as I came and stayed back for the um, follow up discipleship, the ministers not here, there called me. I was in their midst, like Jonah, in the midst of the whale. And I, if I wasn't, I didn't have all the knowledge I have now. And I said, we well, appreciate you. You come to our country. And you're preaching the word of God. Only one thing, only one thing. You've uh, done it in Nigeria, and you appeared successful moderately. Now, they said, this is not Nigeria. They told me point blank, this is Ghana. And if you preach, the word you're preaching in Nigeria, you bring it here, we love you. We don't want to, you to waste your time. It will not work. I said, but it's the Bible. They say, we're helping you. We're trying to tell you that preaching everything from beginning to the end and not quoting it and not modifying it and not changing a little bit, it will not work here. And then I stood up, I said, I believe the word of God will work anywhere, everywhere. So they told me, okay, we'll try to help you, but you are not receiving help. They say, bye-bye. And I didn't understand what will happen. I came the following weekend because I was still lecturing at the University of Lagos and I only could come on weekends to continue the follow-up. We were about 750 the previous time. When I came the following time, the number reduced to about 30 people. 10, 10, 10, 30 people. I used to see the hall filled up. And now I came to the 30 people to prove what they were telling me, that this will not work over here. But I picked up my Bible and the same word, my words cannot save anyone. It says words from on high that will save. 